Welcome to our sound for video session. Oh, I need to go up. Check your fader, people. Uh, welcome to our sound for video session. Soundies, good to have you here. Hope everyone's having a good holiday. And uh, we have a number of things that we're going to cover today, which I'm excited about. And I need to, first of all, find my agenda. Here we go. Okay, let's pull up the agenda and see what we've got going for today. All right, first of all, um, if you are not if you're not familiar with the Sound Speeds channel on YouTube, I think it's a worthwhile channel to follow. It's my friend Alan Williams, who is a boom operator. That's his full time job. He's in Atlanta, Georgia area, and he works on a lot of big productions, so he knows his stuff. He is doing a live stream on the thirtieth of this month, so this is coming week, and uh, there'll be a number of people joining the live stream. I'll be joining for a little while, so I'm looking forward to that. So if you're interested in learning more about production sound and particularly from, well, it's not just going to be about booming. <laughs> There'll be lots of things going on there. So if you are interested, go ahead and check out his channel and you can set a reminder for yourself for that live stream. All right, next up is our question and answer. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that really quickly. We did have a couple of questions that were submitted over the last couple of weeks, so I want to cover those. First up here from JHB, I'm using the Zoom F8N as an interface with audio interface with record. So basically he's using it as an audio interface and to record at the same time. Um, and he's feeding that into a laptop running Reaper, a digital audio workstation. I can see all the inputs separately in Reaper and he adds effects to the tracks and he can send the main out or the sub out uh, on the Zoom for USB one and two. So this is, this, is a, this is a little bit of a routing question, so <laughs> bear with us here. Along with sending the Reaper to, uh, he also sends that output to OBS, so he's live streaming too, evidently. And that, of course, that is all the, um, the effects built in. Is there any way for the left and right recorded on the Zoom to be USB 1 or 2, or will they always stay locked into being the left and right mix from the Zoom? Well, that's, a, that's really a, you, you can do exactly, I think, what you're trying to do there, JHB. The, the secret is that you need to set up your left and right mix on the Zoom to receive the USB 1 and 2 returns from the computer. And so the way you would do that is all of your individual inputs, uh, that you know your microphone inputs, you're going to take the faders on those and pull them all the way down to minus infinity. And then you're going to set up two additional tracks on the Zoom, two additional inputs, and select USB 1 as the input on the first one, and pan that one hard left, and then... Um, and then for the sec the next one, you'll put the USB 2 input, pan that hard right, send those to the mix at, you know, fader of zero, and that your left and right mix will now be what you have processed in Reaper. So that's why you're going to do it. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. There's going to be some latency. So there's round trip latency you're looking at there. So things are not going to be perfectly in sync. I don't know what your goal is or if you if that's a requirement or not, but you could definitely set up the routing to do what you need it to do there. Um, so definitely let me know if that works out and uh, happy streaming. All right, next question. Next question, when submitting an audio book to ACX, and let me just pause there. For those that are not familiar with ACX, that's a voiceover kind of, what's the best way to put it? It's a place where you go if you're going to do narrative, uh, like audio books, you're on ACX, basically. <laughs> and so he, he wants to know how he can meet the following requirement. Um, this is one of ACX's requirements. Uploaded audio file must measure between minus 23 dB and minus 18 dB RMS and have minus 3 dB peak values and a maximum minus 60 dB noise floor. So let's go ahead and take a look at something here. So over here in Audition, I have a couple of audio clips here. And I, I don't know for, for sure if you're using Audition, but what I would do is come into the Amplitude Statistics, do a scan here. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Okay, that came back with a total RMS amplitude of minus 31. That's what we're measuring here. So this is just a recording that I did um, for the video that actually went up on my main channel today. Um, so that's not loud enough. You needed it between uh, minus 23 and minus 18. Now, let me just show you another file here. I took this exact same audio file and I loudness normalized it. I just bumped it up. And when we check that one, that one is now coming in, scanning, 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 at minus 20. So this would be loud enough. Um, now, doing this total RMS amplitude to measure the loudness is sort of an, 
it's a more traditional way to do it. Um, that was before we had things like LUFS. You can see this is coming in at minus 17 LUFS. Um, what RMS doesn't take into account are these silent portions. Um, or actually, it does take them into account, but it, it kind of skews the score quite a bit or skews the reading. So that's why we've moved over to things like LUFS and LKFS. But anyway, if I go back to that first file, it's really just a matter of, of boosting the entire file uh, until you get to where you need to be. So I just boosted that there. That's fine. Let's do a read on that. You may have to do some compression to pull some of these transient peaks, peaks in. Um, that got us to minus 21, so that could work. Now, there are a couple other metrics there as well. I didn't actually intentionally leave any silent portions here, but you would also measure this. That's at minus 65, so our noise floor is good too because they said the noise floor needed to be at minus 60. And then you're going you're gonna to have to do some compression here to pull in those peaks a little bit because they said nothing louder than minus 3 dB. And our dB true peak on this one is currently scanning. We're at basically minus 2 right now, so you need to pull another dB out of that. So just use a compressor and pull some of those top peaks down. So that's the main idea on how to get where you need to be to submit your file to ACX. All right. I think we're good on that. Um, let's go. I am just running a couple things here. All right. Let's go there. Okay, back to the agenda. <laughs> All right, there are the questions and answers. Let's next go to my favorite things of 2020. So um, this is... Uh, I don't know how I feel about these. I, I, th I thought maybe it would be a good way to just sort of review the year. Is this a definitive list? No, it's certainly not. And it's just kind of my experience over the year and some of the some of the things that I've used over the year. And they weren't even necessarily new this year um, that were I found, you know, to be helpful and, and things that I enjoyed. So let's go. First of all, my first on the list is going to be Dante. And specifically... Let's take a look at Dante certification. It turns out that to get Dante certified is actually free. And so what I want to talk about, first of all, what is Dante? Dante is a way to send audio over a, an Ethernet network. And so you can do it without a lot of latency. It is uh, you know, generally for local area networks, so it needs to be a wired network. It's not for wireless. Um, but to become Dante certified, if we go up here to learning... There's a Dante certification program. I actually got certified at the level one so far, um, but it's there are three levels. There's an intermediate and advanced. You don't even have to have any Dante gear to get certified at level one, really. Um, you just basically go through the courseware, take the test, and then you're Dante certified. It's pretty straightforward. It takes a few hours. Um, next up for me is going to be the intermediate. I do have some Dante gear, so <laughs> I think once you get to the level two, you're probably going to want to have some gear on hand that's capable of working with Dante. And uh, if you're curious about, you know, more about Dante and what it means and what it is, there's all sorts of stuff here. You just come over to Audinate.com. They're the company that define and maintain the Dante standards and also produce some of the hardware chipsets and things like that that other manufacturers put in their gear to make them Dante enabled. So, all right. So that's the first one on my list here. Let's uh, switch back over to my list here and see what is next. Oh, next up is the the Rode NTR. It is a ribbon microphone, and it is absolutely dreamy. Um, it's not the type of thing you can use in every kind of space. You do have to have a space that's fairly well controlled from an acoustic standpoint, but it's a ribbon microphone, so this is substantially different than most other condenser microphones. It's actually more like a dynamic microphone, but what it has is basically a little ribbon that is folded into an accordion. Uh, uh, by ribbon, I mean an aluminum piece of, it's basically foil, but it's like two to three microns, maybe four or five microns thick, depending on the microphone, the ribbon microphone. Um, it's, a, it's folded into an accordion pattern. It, it runs vertically, and then there are two big magnets on either side of it. And so as that ribbon moves with the vibrations of the air molecules, um, that generates a signal in this magnetic field, and that's what creates the audio signal. And what's really neat about ribbon microphones is, well, there are a couple things. This particular one, and like most of the traditional ribbon microphones, they have a figure eight polar pattern. So they pick up on the front and the back, and then they reject basically everything on the sides. 
on the top and bottom. Um, they were actually used in filmmaking for a while. And the reason that they were popular in filmmaking initially when they came out in the 30s, it was RCA that made the first ribbon microphones, was that they had that null on the side, that rejection, uh, you know, that null area on the side. So they could put the noisy film camera off to the side of the microphone and be able to capture clean audio, so or relatively clean audio. So <laughs> um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, we really find it useful for uh, recording Emma's trumpet and also my wife's, Danny's uh, violin. It just sounds so beautiful on both of those. One other thing that's unique about them is that um, when you back off, they tend to retain their bass pickup, unlike a lot of condenser microphones and dynamic microphones. So they, you can work from a little bit farther away from them, and they still sound uh, very balanced in a nice way. So that's my second. Uh, third, Sound Devices 888. Now that's not new this year. And in fact, I bought it in the, at the very end of last year. I used it for one production this year and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> but I've used it in lots of my other uh, YouTube videos and even some of the live streams. It is a dream to work with. The routing capabilities on that are phenomenal. Um, incredibly powerful piece of gear. And even since I bought it, they have added um, a lot of new features. When I first got it, it didn't have auto mix. It now has Dugan auto mixing, mix assist. It also has noise assist. So if you do need to do a little bit of attenuation of, of um, noise, it can do that as well. So it does some really cool things there. Uh, next up on my list is the Allen & Heath SQ5. And I don't, you can't actually see it. That's what we're using today. So somebody asked in the chat, what are we doing for our audio signal chain? And so what we've got here is we've got um, our microphone, this is feeding into the Allen & Heath SQ5, which is sitting back here behind me. And I can actually control the SQ5 from my iPad, which is sitting right here. So that's what we did at the start. Um, I got a chance, I've got had a chance to use the SQ5 a lot more this year, and I absolutely love this mixer. It's an amazing mixer. It's not a cheap mixer, but <laughs> it is, uh, it's been really, really awesome. The amount, the processing that it can do, the, the compression, the, the EQ, the routability, it has a, a, a what they call automatic microphone mixing. It has um, AES output. It has an expansion slot so you can add Dante. Um, it has, that's just scratching the surface. It does scenes. It does all sorts of things that I could never do on other uh, mixing boards that I've had before. So that's a pretty neat one. All right, um, this is not new this year, but I do want to talk about for those that are, you know, if we're working on a tighter budget, and this is actually one that I have used on some of the live streams as well, is Mackie makes a series of analog, purely analog mixers. This is the VLZ4 series. This one is the 802. It has three microphone inputs plus uh, four line level inputs. Um, balanced outputs on both XLR and quarter inch. Um, this has been a really good mixer as well. And so if you're looking for something for live streaming or just doing smaller little gigs, uh, the VLZ series is great. And this, I think, is a $220 mixer. So it's been a really nice one. Um, all right. Uh, I'm supposed to drink water, I'm told. <laughs> Next up is the Centrance MicPort Pro 2. The Centrance MicPort Pro 2 is a small, portable, USB, single input audio interface. You can connect to your computer and record to your computer. It is a beautiful little device. So if you need to record or live stream remotely or, you know, on the go, and you're not going to be at your home or your studio or whatever, cool little device. What is really beautiful about that, the preamps are beautiful. The converters are very good. It also has an analog... Um, limiter in it and it works really beautifully so it just sounds fantastic a really great piece of gear in fact uh, Centrance just introduced basically kind of an upgraded version of that it has limiters but it has two inputs and it also can record so it's kind of an update of that one the MicPort Pro 2 plus the R4R which is another one of their devices which actually we're giving away today we'll talk about this one a little bit more later but um, just so you can see what it looks like and kind of get a sense for its size. So here's the two, this is the R4R. This is a two input um, audio interface and recorder. It's still trying to focus. It'll eventually get it. If we're lucky, maybe not. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, but you can see two XLR combo inputs on the bottom there. 
um, kind of the approach that Centrance takes is a very kind of um, traditional. Everything is a physical control. There are no screens and no menus. Um, I think it's a really good approach personally, but uh, some people disagree with me. Some people would rather have all the, the screens and the touch screens and all that business. And there's a time and a place, I guess. But um, the only downside, I guess, is you do have, there's there are reference cards that come with it that you'll probably want to keep with the device <laughs> uh, because sometimes you have to go, oh, hey, how do I do this? And that explains all that. All right, next up is actually a movie, a film that I would recommend. And so um, this is a film called Making Waves, The Art of Cinematic Sound. If you have Amazon Prime, it is, I believe it looks like it is free for those on Amazon Prime. And I think it's $3.99 or something if you don't. But they cover kind of in about an hour and a half uh, a brief history of sound in cinema. And it is a it's a brilliantly done movie. It's really, really done, well done. And uh, I would highly recommend that you take a look at that if you care about audio for film. They have Ben Burt in it. They, they interview Walter Murch, uh, Gary Rydstrom, a lot of the big names in post. It's very much, I would say it's post um, focused. It's not really a lot about production sounds as much. So very much post and sound design related, but definitely worth a watch. All right. Coming back to my list here. Okay. Uh, for those that are podcasters, I think the Roadcaster Pro, um, again, not new this year, but something that this year they added a firmware update that extended the capabilities of the Roadcaster Pro in a very substantial way. So they had from the start compressors, deessers, all this processing. But they've now made it so that you can adjust all of the settings on those. And frankly, the, the like for example, the compressor before it was it was an on or off switch, and it was like bulldozer compressor. It was horrible, <laughs> at least from my point of view. And uh, they've opened all that up, so now you can do so much with the Rodecaster Pro. It's a really impressive little thing. Um, is it for everybody? No, but it's it's cool that it. To me, it's different from a traditional mixing board from the standpoint that it does have these the compressor and the de-esser built in, as well as a couple of their own effects. Um, they call them the big bottom and the... It's, it's basically an RL exciter. I don't remember what they call it. But anyway, pretty cool device. If you're podcasting, I think it's a good choice there. Next up is the TZ Audio Stellar X2 Vintage. This was just a microphone that kind of I liked for my particular voice. It has kind of a vintage sound to it. Um, a little bit mid-forward, but it, it kind of fit my voice pretty nicely. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone with an XLR output. Affordably priced, I think it's about $250. And the people over at TZ Audio actually more recently contacted me. They have a, a new version of their line of the Stellar mics uh, coming out sometime in January or February. And so we're in talks here to see if we can get our hands on one of those and do a review of one of those. Uh, next up, again, not a new microphone. It's probably five years old. Um, it actually came out, I think, maybe it actually is older than that, but it's the Rode NT1. And uh, it's new to me this year. People kept asking me to compare in my microphone reviews. Anytime I did a large diaphragm condenser microphone, they wanted me to compare it to a Rode NT1, and I didn't have one, and so I bought one, and <laughs> I really like the NT1. It sounds good on almost all the voices I've put through it so far. Uh, fantastic microphone, so really, really like that. I think a big one this year is, and it's, it's actually, it didn't come out this year technically. Well, part of the line came out this year, but that is the ATEM Mini Pro and the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Those two came out this year. The A10 Mini came out last year. But the part of that that I'm most impressed with is the Fairlight uh, audio processors that are built into it. It's an amazing device in and of itself, but it's especially cool in light of the fact that you have all this amazing Fairlight processing built in. Now, it's all digital, so like a limiter, for example, isn't going to save you on the inputs. You still need to take care of your gain, staging, and you know manage all that there. But once you've applied all that processing, you can also apply a limiter and just a really, really great set of features. So really excited about that this year. And then finally, and uh, I guess last but not least, is my new favorite microphone, which is right here. <laughs> this is the uh, Earthworks SR314. 
and is a it's a seven hundred dollar microphone. But from my point of view, this is a buy uh, once for your lifetime, and then you can get off of the super highway of obsessing about microphones forever. And it is just an amazing microphone for live streaming, certainly. But I think musicians would find it really, really good for not only vocals, but you could use it for a lot of other things as well, instruments. It's a small diaphragm condenser microphone. And uh, it just, every person that I've had recorded through it so far just sounds fantastic. So it's just a really good, balanced, great sounding microphone on almost everyone that talks through it. So... All right. Um, let me let me just finish. There was a thought I started. I don't think I finished it yet. Um, in terms of the audio signal chain, a lot of you that have followed for a while already know this. So I have the SR314. This is going into the Allen & Heath SQ5, but I've also run this through the Mac EVLZ4 before. Um, but then from there, we go line out um, into the camera. So that's how we're routed today. And actually, in this particular case, because the Canon C200 has uh, the ability to switch the microphone inputs to AES, we're going digital AES out from the SQ5 into the Canon C200. And what that does is it makes it so that the Canon is not, we're not using the preamps on the Canon, we're not using the converters on the Canon. All of the audio processing is done here on the SQ5, and then it just sends a digital signal, which the Canon C200 then lines up with the video signal and sends to the ATEM. That's it. So it's a it's a signal chain that works really well for me. And it makes it a lot, I think it makes it a lot easier. So you're really just, um, like you don't even have to calibrate your levels like you would with your doing line level because it's already digitized and it's already set at dB full scale in the digital stream. So really cool setup. All right, I think it's time for a giveaway. And what I'm what 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 I'm doing here? Let me just explain the purpose of this. Uh, the goal here is to give um, is to you know provide some of you with some gear. I I have a, so much gear here, so much gear. Um, we've lost count of how many microphones we have. We don't even really know. Um, that's a sad state of affairs. And the what goes along with that is there are a lot of microphones that don't get use because we have so many. So what we're trying to do here is find new homes. And it's not just microphones. We have a whole bunch of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, probably the simplest piece of gear. But this is something that I think everyone should have one of on hand. Um, and if you don't already, and let me, let me kind of explain how this is going to work. So we're going to do this by random number generator and have everybody guess a number. Whoever's closest is the winner of that particular piece of gear. You can only win one thing. So we need to kind of spread the love out a little bit. Um, and then the way it works is you pay for shipping and any customs fee, you know, like if you're international, if there are customs or anything like that, um, you pay that. So hopefully that works okay for you. If that, uh, if that, if you're, if you're okay with that, then you're welcome to bid on these and let's see what we can do. So the first one up, we're going to try with the, this is the Ceremonic SR2, sorry, SR PAX2 audio adapter. It's made for hybrid and DSLR cameras. Let me just talk about what it has on it. So you can see here it has two XLR inputs back here. It also has three 3.5 millimeter inputs. So you can input either a stereo 3.5 millimeter or you can input one on the left and one on the right and it will keep those channels separate to the camera. So you can mix and post. It does allow you to switch, uh, it does supply phantom power. It allows you to switch to line level. So if you need to run a line level into your hybrid camera, this is a way to do that. Um, and it's decent. The audio quality is pretty good. You also have, obviously, a couple of pots to control your levels. Um, it runs on a 9-volt battery, single 9-volt, and then, of course, you run a 3.5-millimeter TRS output to your camera. Now, there is one thing missing on this that I have to... I ha I'm going to try and find it. I can't guarantee that I will find it, is that the shoe mount is missing. I couldn't find it. <laughs> but you can buy those on Amazon for $3, so it's not a huge loss, but... Um, and then you can, it does have a, a screw on top for mounting your camera on top if you wanted to do that. We forgot to tell him some stuff. Oh, we forgot to tell him some stuff, Emma says. Yes, so the range is 1 to 50. And in the chat, I will put numbers for whatever gear start here. And then put your numbers under that, and then we'll call it when we have enough numbers. And then we will figure out who has the number. Okay. And then I will announce who got it in the chat. And then <laughs> we also tell them... 
we need to tell them what to do to claim it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there's some instructions here. Uh, let me just repeat what Emma said there. So we will start, we'll, we'll say when the bidding starts, Emma will put a note in the chat, start bidding now, and she will indicate the range of numbers that you need to choose from. So you choose one number in that range. Um, then she'll call it when we're done. And then she will find whoever guessed closest to the number that was randomly generated. So I have the random number generator up here. Okay, we're starting now. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to go between 1 and 50. Actually, how many people do we have in the live stream? Let's check that. <laughs> All right. How many people in the live stream? We have 104 people in the live stream according to this. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Let's actually do between 1 and 100 then. So I'm going to generate a new number. Okay. I have a number. We're using random.org to generate our numbers. It actually seeds its random number generation based on atmospheric noise. Kind of cool. So go ahead and start the bidding. This is for the SR2 or SR PAX2 from Ceramonic audio adapter for DSLR and, and hybrid cameras. And uh, Emma will put the thing in the chat and then you can go ahead and start guessing. And while you're doing your guess, um, you get to choose one number, just one number. If you enter multiple, please don't do that. <laughs> um, oh, we're getting chat spam. <laughs> we're getting chat spam? This reminds me of Kenny Beats, y'all. It reminds us of Kenny Beats. If you've ever been on um, on, a Twitch stream. on a Twitch stream and you've ever been to a Kenny Beats stream, um, it goes quickly. So we have a whole bunch. So here, um, well, let me know when they kind of, when they start trickling. Go ahead and call it, and I'll give you the random number. Still coming in pretty quickly. Okay, we're gonna stop right there. Okay, go ahead and put the uh, stopping there. Right. Okay, so the ran the the number submission is now closed for the ceremonic, and the random number was eleven. So I Emma's gonna. Saw an 11. So Emma's Emma's gonna go look, and see who we find here. Ooh. Hope everyone had a good holiday. I wonder if we had multiple elevens. We didn't have any actual elevens. We had a fourteen. We had a fourteen. We had a sixteen. We had an eight. I also had a 13. I believe 13. 13 is our winner. So who is our winner? Coffin. Go ahead and put that up on the chat overlay here. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> who is our winner? There it is. Coffin is our winner. Okay. So the way this works next is I need you to email me and say, you know, I won this. Let's actually, uh, you know, what we we'll need to keep... It in the chat. Okay. Um, so if you would email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com and uh, let's get your address there and we'll, I'll, I'll get a, a bid for you on shipping and uh, we'll get this over to you. So congratulations. Happy holidays. Happy recording. Go ahead and put this down right over here. Okay. What is next on the list? All right. Next up is the Sentrance Mixer Face R4R. We talked about this just a few minutes ago. So this is a two-channel uh, XLR combination input little device. It's made out of solid metal, and it's got a quarter 20 mounting thread on the bottom. I've actually did a review on this on my main YouTube channel, if you're interested. Fantastic preamplifiers. Oh, I just turned it on. How about that? Um, you can power it. It's also an audio interface. It records to micro SD card. Great sounding preamplifiers. This one does not have limiters, just so you're aware. Um, but it does have the ability to mix the audio coming back from your computer. So if you are, say, for example, uh, trying to record some singing, some vocals with a some pre-recorded tracks, you can do that on here and get a nice uh, headphone feed for the talent or the performer. Uh, Mixer, or sorry, Sentrance is known for their headphone DACs, and so this has a great headphone output as well. So, all right, let's go ahead and generate a new number. Let's go ahead and start the bidding on this. We're going to do it between 1 and 100. Again, we're generating our new number. We just did. 
And did you, okay, bidding is open. Go ahead and enter one number per person, please. And uh, let's see what we get here. might take us a while this might take a while i hope you guys are <laughs> free for a little while but we're at 12 30 so we still got half an hour to kind of knock these out yeah. happy to report we got an inch and a half of snow last night we we're in um up in utah up in the mountains here and it has been an extraordinarily dry year um so we're really happy to have a new inch and a half of snow and those for those that are skiers they're probably very happy too Okay, stopping this one. Okay, we are stopping submissions for this one. <laughs> Bill McKenna, we cannot do this with Jack Daniels. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do with Jack Dan. You, you can do with Jack, Jack Daniels on your side if you like. Um, but we're going to uh, we're going to keep it sober here for now <laughs> on this side. So All right. Ah, uh, the random number was fifteen this time. Fifteen. Almost doesn't seem random because it was so close to the last one, but. Again, we're using atmospheric noise to seed our random number generator oh, here. Bill McKenna, 15 exactly. Bill McKenna guessed 15. Let's see if we have any other 15s. Checking for other 15s. No. Bill McKenna it is. Put put Bill up on the screen there. Excellent. All right, Bill. Um, if you would email me, curtis at learnlightandsound.com. We'll work out shipping, and I'll get you a quote on that. Um, probably... Probably not today, but uh, here in the next couple of days. But if you could email me and uh, let me know where you'd like to have it shipped, we'll get a quote for you and we'll be on our way. So congratulations and happy recording. This is a great one. Um, again, great piece of gear. If I didn't have so many other recorders, <laughs> this one would probably get a lot more use. Bangs asks, when will we be giving away the new water heater? <laughs> Uh, Bangs Naughty Bits wants to know when the water heater is going up for bid. We do not have a water heater, although that would be really helpful, I'm sure. <laughs> um, all right, let's see here. All right, next up on our list is the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. Let me just pull that over here, show you that. We did a review on this one as well. This is an interesting one. So. I believe, I'm not 100% positive, but I believe that some of the engineers that left AKG went to Lewitt. And uh, they make a variety of different microphones. This is the LCT 440 Pure Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. You can see there with an XLR output. It comes, of course, with its own uh, foam pop shield, but it also comes with a rather uh, unusual but effective shock mount with a 5 8 inch on this side. And then it also has an additional metal pop shield that attaches via magnets right there. Kind of a cool little thing there. But the thing that's unique about this microphone from my standpoint, um, based on the, the review that I did, this sounds an awful lot like the Sennheiser MKH-416, except in a large diaphragm format. So if you're into that sound, if you like that very bright, crisp sound, and uh, plenty of bass as well, then this could be a good option for you. So let's generate a new random number and let's go ahead and open the bidding. We're gonna go between one and 100 again. Between one and 100 and we have our number generated. Bidding is open, coming in. Um, this is another mic that I, I, I very much like. It's not a great fit for my voice. It's it's probably not the best fit for people with very sibilant voices, although you can use a de and it'll be fine. Um, it sounded quite nice on my wife's voice in particular. But again, we have so many microphones here that this one sadly doesn't get enough use, and so it needs to go to a new home where it will get plenty of use. So how are we doing over there? Lots of people excited about this one. Lots of people excited about this one, and rightly so. It's a, it's a great microphone so um, also comes with the the pouch of course solid build okay we're stopping solid this one. okay we're stop we're stopping this one wow <laughs> all right 
Okay, what have we? Okay, the random number generated for this one was 45. Mm. So Emma's going to take a look through the chat here, see what we can find. Ah. Camille Backstein, 45. Oh, we have one 45 from Camille. This one may be going to the Netherlands. Let's see what, if we got any other 45s. That's, by the way, I have um, more Dutch ancestry than any other type of ancestry, despite my last name being Judd. Um, I have my grandmother on my mother's side was 100% Dutch from Rotterdam, and my father has Dutch ancestry as well. Okay, that's Camille's. Camille's, all right. Camille, you are the winner. So, Camille, if you would email me, curtis at learnlightandsound.com, we will arrange to get this shipped over to you. And uh, happy recording. This will be a good one. I can't wait to hear your recordings. We're, like, we're moving through this pretty well. Nice. We have a late entry, one that was actually, I don't I don't know if this one made the list that when I sent out the announcement for the live stream, but um, this will be a little bit more special uh, niche, I guess. This is a microphone boom arm by Heil. It's the PL2T. And it comes with, this is what makes it more niche here. Uh, let me see if I can pull this off. It's a tight fit. Um, what it, well, I'm not going to try and pull it off. This attaches to the side of a desk. So you need to have, uh, you need to be okay with screwing this into a desk of some sort or some other sort of table or something sturdy. <laughs> um, and the screws are, you know, probably, I would say, eight centimeters apart, two and a half, three inches apart. So uh, that's what's kind of unique about this particular setup, but it is a microphone boom stand with a 5 8 inch threaded um, uh, stud here, I guess. It has internal springs. You can route the cable through uh, on the inside of this right, right here. It is a, it's, it's what I used until just recently. I actually have I've moved over to an OC white, which is kind of keeps it more out of the frame. <laughs> but if you're doing voiceover or something like that, this is a pretty nice option here. So let's generate a random number and get on with the bidding. We do have a random number. Bidding open. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go between 1 and 100 again. So guess a number between 1 and 100. And uh, we will we'll end the bidding here in just a couple minutes. Or the way Emma's running this thing in a couple seconds. <laughs> She's fast. All right, keep hydrated. Cheers, happy holidays, everybody. How are we doing there, still rolling in? Mm -hmm. Okay, still rolling in. Let's get things lined up here for our next. Okay, I think we're in good shape. And cut. Okay, she's cutting it right there. What do we got? Go ahead and put a thing in the chat, did you? You didn't tell me what the number was. No, no, I mean put a, say, we're done with yes, bidding. I okay, did. okay, we're, we're good. Go. Okay, nine, 98 is the random number this time. Gonzalo, 98. Do we have any other 98s? We do not. Gonzalo? Okay. Let's put them up on the screen. Wow. There we go. Here we go. I believe you're down in Chile. Congratulations. So go ahead and email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com and we'll arrange for shipping for you. Happy recording. Okay, next up we have a shotgun microphone. This is um, the Rode NTG4. It comes with the... You don't get the lint. I'm, I'll keep the lint. But it does come with the, uh, <laughs> the foam cover. It does come with the microphone. This is the NTG4 Plus, so it does have an inbuilt battery. And uh, you don't have to use the battery. You can just power it from your recorder or mixer. And... Uh, has a high pass filter and it does have a presence boost. So if you do put it in some sort of wind protection, you can bump up the high frequency response just a touch. It also comes with a standard microphone clip. So if you're just statically booming, you can use that. 
and it does come with a USB micro to USB A cable to charge it, the internal battery. All right, and of course the pouch, the road pouch as well. All right, let's go ahead and generate our random number between one and 100. Okay, we have our number, guess between one and 100, and we'll have a winner here in just a minute. Someone wants you to give away the lint. Separately. The lint, the lint will come later. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we had a rush of like twenty numbers. Oh like wow. One second. Okay. Woo. All right. Like to see that enthusiastic bidding. Very excited for these to go to a new home where, where they'll get some use because they've they all got use initially, um, but then again, as with all the other gear around, it hasn't got as much lately. So. I'm excited for them to be back in production. Things are still coming in. We're done. We're done. Okay. We are done. So the random number for this round for the Rode NTG 4 Plus is number seven. Mm. Emma's looking through the chat. Let's see what we've got. Oh, uh, we have a single number seven. We have a number seven. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Wait, I lost it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There, we're going to find our number seven. All right. El Fupo, you are the winner of the Rode NTG4 Plus. So if you would uh, email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com, we'll talk about how to get this over to you. And congratulations on your uh, new microphone, new shotgun microphone. All right. <laughs> Chris says, sorry I am late. Was cutting my hair. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris, about your hair. I hope it uh, works out okay in the end. All right. Let's take a look on what's next. Next is the Audio-Technica AT2005, which is a dynamic USB and XLR microphone. Um, this one was one of the first, well, I did a review on this one years ago, probably 2014, I would guess. But this kit comes with a variety of things. So of course, there's first of all, the microphone itself. It is a dynamic microphone, which means that you're gonna work up pretty close on it. It does have an on-off switch. It has two types of output, an XLR output and a USB output. The, the USB output is USB mini. It also has a headphone jack and a volume control on this. So if you're using it in as a USB microphone, you can monitor directly from the microphone, which is helpful. And it can play back. I believe it plays back from the computer as well. It's been a while since I used this one. But of course, when you uh, are ready to connect to something else like a mixer, it does have an XLR output. It has a mic clip. Um, it does have a, the USB cable. It's, a, again, USB mini to USB A. And it comes with a little miniature tripod stand. <laughs> and it also, of course, has the uh, storage bag. It's the, right it it's the Audio Technica AT2005. Okay, Emma's going to write that down for us here. All right, so we're going to generate a new number here for this one. Um, I, I will say one thing about this microphone. This is actually, um, I think it's a pretty good microphone. For people with darker voices especially, this is going to work nicely because it does have a, a high presence boost in its frequency response. So it sounded a little bit, a little rough on my voice with a lot of sibilance, but otherwise really good. So let's generate that number between one and 100. All right, we have our number. Let's go ahead and start the bidding. Okay, bidding is starting. Alan asks if we're sure the Canon autofocus is on. Oh, it might not be. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's not. Good job, Alan, you were right. Uh, when I recorded some things earlier this week, we had turned it off for one reason or another. Good catch, thank you for that. When you're doing a live stream, there are approximately 10 million things going on at the same time, and sometimes you forget some of them. And this week it was autofocus. It's always something. 
All right, we're going to bundle this back up. It all fits nicely into its little carrying pouch. Super convenient. I took this with me on some international trips when I needed to do the sound for video sessions internationally a number of years ago. So this has been in, on uh, some of our sound for video sessions before. Okay, what's the number? Okay, we are closing the bidding. And the random number for the Audio-Technica AT2005 is 62. Uh -huh. There is one. There is a 62. Okay, at least one. Let's check to see if there are others. Running through the chat there. Somebody asked, what is 24? <laughs> what is 24? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. that I, I think the answer typically is 42, but I'm not positive on that. All righty, we have a 62. Okay, we have a 62, and our winner is? Swiss Smith. Swiss Smith. There you go. All right. The AT2005 is now yours. If you would just email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com, we will get you uh, some shipping information and get that over to you. So congratulations and happy recording or streaming or voiceovering or whatever you do, podcasting. All right. That is the AT2005. We're checking that off the list. Okay, the next one is kind of near and dear to my heart. And for a reason, this one, I, I went back and forth multiple times on whether this would be included in the drawing because this is the very first XLR microphone I ever bought. It is the Rode NT1A, large diaphragm condenser microphone uh, made by Rode. I bought this along with my first audio interface in probably 2000 and seven or something like that something like that um anyway it comes with the storage pouch and it also comes with a shock mount this is this is shows you how old this microphone is so it's out of warranty first of all <laughs> they have a 10-year warranty on these and it's out of warranty um the originally originally they do still sell these actually um, even though the nt1 is also out and the main difference is these are silver instead of black and they are a little bit more bright in terms of their voicing. So they do have a bit more of a presence boost in the higher frequencies, so it's gonna sound crisper. Um, the original version shipped with this shock mount, they have a different shock mount now, um, but this one still, of course, works. It just doesn't include a pop filter, so you'll have to provide your own pop filter if you need one of those. And it does have a 5 8 inch receiver there on the shock mount. So let's generate, now the, again, this one's special because it was very, my very first XLR microphone that I bought, but, Again, it gets no use, and so it needs to go to a good home. Somebody asked if you'll autograph it. <laughs> autograph it? <laughs> if the winner would like it autographed, we'll autograph it. I, I'll, I'll sign it. How about that? Okay, we have a number, a random number generated between 1 and 100, so go ahead and submit your guess between 1 and 100. Are they coming in? Coming in, okay. Incoming. I put autographed on request by winner. So somebody's <laughs> going to be asking. <laughs> All right. Oh, actually, put that down too soon. There we go. All right, they're still coming in? Yep. Good. All right. Got just a few more after, a couple more after this. Okay, okay we're calling it. We're ending the bidding on the Rode NT1A right here. Okay, you ready? Yes. The random number for this one was 91. Mm -hmm. So Emma's going to take a look through the chat here, see what we've got. How's our live stream doing, by the way? We, we, we're getting back up on the horse after a couple of weeks of not doing a live stream after a rather rough experience a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. Felt like Google hated us, um, <laughs> but hopefully everything's coming through okay. Let us know in the chat. Okay, we have a 95. We have a 95, okay. I don't know that we got any 91s, so we might have to get the closest number. Mm -hmm. 97. Okay, 95 is the closest still. Do we have any upper 80s? 94. Oh, we have a 94. Ooh, this might be a close one, people. 
This is getting exciting. I have butterflies in my stomach. Okay, 94 it is, it looks like. 94 is our winner, and wait, that wait, is... Wait, not the winner. Oh, wait, wait, the wait. The 90s. We've got to look at the 80s. Oh, now. we're looking at the 80s. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Don't get too excited here. 89. Oh, we have an 89. That's the closest so far. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this is as exciting for you as it is for us. <laughs> uh, Danny's really excited because there's going to be less stuff in the house. And I'm excited because they're going to new homes where they'll get some good use. 89. Kenny. Eight, 89 is our winner. It's who? Kenny Tom. Oh, Kenny. Okay. Not Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. Congratulations. Go ahead and email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com and we'll get this over to you. Congrats on the new microphone. This one is, again, near and dear to my heart. <laughs> All right. That is the Rode NT1A heading to its new home. All right. Next up, we have, um, I was going to say a battle-tested. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I think it is a battle-tested microphone, and this one's been used a few times. This is a Sankin Cos 11D microphone, lavalier microphone. It is wired with a 3.5 millimeter locking connector for Sennheiser systems. However, it will work with most 3.5 millimeter microphone wireless systems. Um, just to give you a quick look at this. Actually, I'll do a tour once we get the bidding going here. Let's generate our random number between 1 and 100. Okay, we have our random number. Let's go ahead and no, open. No, not yet. Not oh, yet. not yet. Not yet. we got to write it down. Um, Emma has to do a little bookkeeping here. <laughs> I got a little ahead of her. Apologies for that. But this is the microphone here. Here's the three point, oops, 3.5 millimeter. It's trying to focus on my eyes. There we go. 3.5 millimeter locking plug. There's the mic itself. These get a lot of use in production, on production sound sets. It is a classic mic. Um, it sounds horrible on my voice until I EQ it, and then it sounds amazing. So, have we opened the bidding? Yes, we just oh. had two seventy fours. Okay, the bidding Four. is open. It also comes, incidentally, it comes with this plastic uh, pouch, which is a kind of a cardboard sleeve over it. It does come with a alligator clip and a metal kind of um, windscreen that goes on the top of it. And it also comes with, I can't remember what they call these. What do they call these? No, it's the RM11. It's a little kind of silicone sleeve that you can use to hide the lavalier microphone on people, like on their chest. Can come in handy as well. So that's all part of the kit. All right, how are we doing there? Still rolling in? We are cutting. Okay, we are ending the bidding on the Sankin Cos 11D right there. Are we ready for our random number? Yes. Okay, the random number for the Sankin Cost 11D is 63. So Emma's going to take a look through there. Uh, this is from Sankin, the world's most original microphone maker, they say. <laughs> they do have some really unique things that they do, I will say that. And this is a this is a tough microphone. There's a, That's part of the reason I think you see a lot of these on set is in addition to sounding great, they are super tough. They're a little, the cable's a little bit thicker, so it, it stands up pretty well. And... The Sankin actually, the, the head's a little bit longer than a lot of other microphones, so that can be tricky to hide in some circumstances, but what that allows them to do is I believe there are two diaphragms in the Cost 11D. And um, overall, again, a great sounding microphone. we got to have a rematch. we got two 66s, and that's the closest. Okay, so the two people that guessed 66, we're going to have you guess again. That is Spike, Spike. and Daniel. Spike and Daniel, you go ahead and guess again a number between 1 and 100, and whoever is closer on the new number will be the winner of the Sankin Cost 11D. So Spike and Daniel, go ahead and guess again, and I'm going to generate a new number. Okay, and you're watching? We'll wait for him. Okay, we're waiting for Spike and Daniel. Which Daniel? Daniel Van? Wait. We're looking. Daniel Montiero. Okay. Daniel M. Yes. All right. And Spike, what does Spike have a, is it Spike? Spike Boydell. Spike Boydell. Okay, Spike. My friend in uh, Australia there. 
All right. Again, guess in you two guess a number between one and one hundred. We're waiting. They are uh, not here. Maybe they had to leave. We'll give them a couple more seconds here. <laughs> Daniel's guess is twenty-five. Okay. Spike, we're just waiting on yours. If you're still there, Spike, go ahead and put another guess in between 1 and 100. And let's see what we get here. Andrew asks, is this a loudness war? <laughs> no loudness wars. We're really trying to end that war. I'm trying my best. I think we should just standardize. And if it were my choice, actually, that's an interesting topic. I would... I actually, I know a lot of people have suggested that for podcasts and other online content, spoken word content, minus 16 LUFS, I actually prefer closer to minus 18. I feel like it preserves a little bit more dynamic range. And I think most devices these days can, you know, play that back pretty effectively. Are we waiting on Spike still? Mm -hmm. Spike, to uh, let's, give, let's give Spike 15 more seconds. And if there's nothing from Spike in 15 seconds, then we'll go to Daniel. Oh. Okay. Ten. We're down to 10 seconds, Spike. Spike, if you're there, put a number in between 1 and 100 really quickly. Five. Five seconds left. He's got a forfeit. Okay, we're going to Daniel. Daniel is the winner of our Sankin Cost 11D. And uh, Emma will put him up on the screen here. Daniel, if you will email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com, we'll get that over to you. You have Daniel there? Mm -hmm. Sankin goes to Daniel. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have one last item. Uh, this was my very first... Um, I would say kind of prosumer slash pro level audio recorder mixer, and that is the Zoom F8. I bought this right as it was first announced. I actually got to interview, well, I saw it at NAB when it was a prototype, and then um, I pre-ordered it, and I got it right as it started shipping. It is, it's a fantastic recorder. There are so many amazing things about this. Eight XLR combo inputs, two SD cards uh, slots that it can record different things to or the same thing to, so if you need a backup, it's got a Hiroshi input, so you can power from cinema batteries or other larger format batteries. Um, two XLR-based TA3M outputs, so they're balanced outputs. In addition, you have a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced output, so you can run into hybrid cameras. It does have the Zoom uh, kind of proprietary microphone interface if you're into that. It has a time code generator built in with, S, um, with BNC connectors. Um, this is a, the original F8 that has the kind of the battery caddy. Let me just pop that open. So you put eight AA batteries in this little caddy here. That slots in. Can also be powered via AC. Comes with an AC adapter. And this one actually comes in the original box, I believe. So uh, there it is, our Zoom F8. Made a lot of fun recordings with this one. You should sign it. Um, if you want it signed, let me know, and we'll sign it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start the bidding with a number between 1 and 100. I'm going to generate the number right now. Number is generated, and bidding is open. Also, Kenny wanted you to sign the Sure. You should do that on camera. Kenny wanted me to sh sign the Sure? Yeah, the one he got. Which one is that? <laughs> the silver one. <laughs> oh, you mean the road? The road, yes. Yeah, the road, okay. Do it on screen. I don't have a... I don't we'll get you a sharpie. Do it on screen. <laughs> People, let's not get weird about this. <laughs> I like the microphone. And uh, anyway, I'm not sure how well a sharpie. Well, we could ask Rob if Rob K is still here. How well has the signature on the Stellar X2 held up? Is it still there? Rob, answer in the chat if you if you're hearing this. All right, we're keeping the uh, bids coming in. Still coming in? That's all of them. Okay, looks like we got our bids. So we're closing the bidding on the Zoom F8. 
just for clarification, this is the original F8, not the F8N, um, but it's still a great de device. Really, the kind of the difference between the two is very small. The battery compartment's different on the F8N. Um, I actually preferred the original, to be honest. And the other difference is, is that the um, if you want to feed a line level signal into the Zoom F8, the original here, you have to come in on quarter inch. You cannot use XLR. On the F8N, you can actually switch. You can just tell it, even if it's on XLR, that could be a line input. On this, it has to be quarter inch for line input, XLR for mic input, um, which is a, a lot of traditional studio gear actually is that way too. All right, we have uh, closed the bidding. The random number for the Zoom F8 is... 49. Oh, we have a 49. Let me look some more. We have at least one 49. We're looking through the chat here to see if we have some others. While she's looking, I this is one of the cool gifts that I got for Christmas this year. <laughs> this is my Earthworks SR314 that's been bedazzled with uh, a star and some Chris, a Christmas grill. <laughs> One of my favorite new gifts here. All right. We're looking through the chat here still. This one's an important one. I'm excited for whoever gets this one. This is a great recorder, too. Okay, Peter. Peter. Is that Peter Locke? Peter Caballero. Peter Caballero. Okay, Peter Caballero. Uh, if you would please email me at curtis at learnlightandsound.com. We'll make arrangements to get this shipped over to you. And happy recording. This one's a great one. You can do a lot of stuff with a Zoom F8. So, all right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for our live stream today. Um, Alvaro is contributing to the Sharpie Fund. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. If you do want it signed, we'll sign it. Uh, happy to do that. Get out there and make some great sound, and we will talk to you all again next week. Take care, everybody.
Thank you.